Welcome back, Heat Seekers. It's waiver wire time again, as always. And Craig and I are here to bring you some hopeful IDP gems. As always, if you guys have questions, drop them below. We'll get to them. With that being said, let's get to it. Linebackers, who are we talking about, Mr. Craig? So uh, you live and you learn. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. We had a couple misses last week with these first two in terms of replacements for the injured players. Deion Jones for the injured Sione Takitaki. Uh, he ended up being the guy with the highest snap share, 88% to 18 and 16% that the other two sort of replacements we had potentially talked about. And, uh, you know, he's the veteran. They're still trying to do what they can. I wouldn't say contend, but put on a good performance. Um, and he had a nice stat line. He had seven combined tackles, a couple pass deflections, interception. So it looks like uh, the guy with three nice matchups here towards the end of the year. And then, uh, so if David Long is out again, Monty Rice was the guy that was more productive. We had the great player, Dylan Cole, for snap share at 82%, but he only had five combined tackles. Uh, Monty Rice had a 71% snap share, but he had tackle for a loss, 12 combined. And uh, he's probably going to be he's just you know, the better prospect, if you want to talk about that, when they came out, but you know, athletically and all that, of the linebackers that they have there right now to replace. So if Long is out again, I'd be looking at him. A couple other guys, so... Jim and Davis coming off a bye week. They faced the Giants the last time that they played, and he had seven solos, three assists, a tackle for a loss, fumble recovery in that overtime game. But he's going to be the main guy there in the middle of the linebackers. And um, just another sort of matchup play for a guy that is has a low roster ship. He landed Roberts. He's really a tackle heavy player. So if you're in big play leagues, you probably don't really have as much interest in him, but he's tied for 22nd in solo tackles of all linebackers over the past four weeks. He had a nice week this past week, and he is uh, played Buffalo, who are second in points allowed to opposing linebackers, and he had seven combined the last time that they played earlier this year, so he's in another nice spot. Yeah. In, uh, in, in one of the IDP leagues that I'm in, that I'm in the playoffs, and I've been trying to scour the waiver wires for some edge help which can be a linebacker, could be a defensive end. And I was really surprised about a guy, uh, Josh Uchi from the Patriots. He's been getting tons of sacks over the last few weeks and really been getting involved. So, I mean, like these guys, you know, I like the, I like these options. I think they all have potential, you know, but don't be afraid to hit your waiver wires and, and find some gems because there are plenty of guys out there that you can flex in that have been getting hot lately. These four are great names. You know, I was surprised hitting my waiver wire that all these guys are available so, you know, uh, don't be afraid to start these guys if you need some help or if you're dealing with injuries as well. Defensive backs, who are we talking about? So a couple of bigger name guys. The first one, um, and I'm actually going in order of preference for the safeties, Cameron Curl, Cameron Curl the commanders. Uh, he's got 6% roster ship in Yahoo, which is insane. He's had nine games in a row with 100% snap share. He's com- cleared five combined tackles in all but one game this year. Again, it was an overtime game, but the last time they played the Giants two weeks ago, he had 12 combined tackles, and, I mean, he should just be rostered in pretty much every IDP league if you're in a 12-team league where you start two. So go grab him if he is available. Another guy that is available widely because he didn't play a lot this year, Jimmy Ward of the 49ers came back from injury for good in Week 7. Since then, he has a 77% snap share. He's got 34 combined tackles, a couple interceptions, some pass deflections. Seattle's going to be playing the 49ers this week. It's a must win for Seattle to stay in the playoff hunt, and they already give up the six most points to opposing safety. So he's in a really nice spot for, again, really low roster ship. Guy that I'm not really high on for IDP, we talked about him a lot his rookie year, but Trevon Morig, he's been viable the past few weeks, sort of like as a flex defensive back or flex yeah. player if you need to. He's had 100% snap share the past five weeks, sort of once they got rid of Jonathan Abram. He's had at least Three combined tackles in four of those five weeks. Patriots give up a lot of points to opposing safeties on the year. So, again, he plays free side deal for IDP purposes, but he's been productive when he's been on the field. It's more of a much deeper league play than the first two. In cornerback, there's a guy that I really like here. Brad knows about uh, Jerry Jacobs for the Lions. So his first action of the year for the Lions was week nine. He'd been injured. Over the past two weeks, he has got a 98.5% snap share. And 82% of his snaps have come as a wide cornerback. They're facing the Jets this week, who just gave up, you know, I think it was um, 
four and six combined tackles or something like that to the wide corners when they're playing the Bills. And I actually expect this game to be much more of a shootout than that game was. Um, so um, do, 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 assuming, again, I should preface this, that uh, either Flacco or Mike White play. If Zach Wilson is in there, uh, the Jets were atrocious as far as throwing to their wide receivers. So not as exciting then. But if you got White or Flacco in there, I really like Jacobs as a cornerback play that is you know, pretty much zero roster ship. Yeah, Jay, this team loves Jerry Jacobs. I mean, he's, he's he plays hard. He's a physical. He'll get in your face. I mean, he's he's definitely an option if you need some cornerback help. You know, I know I've rostered Okuda in a lot of spots uh, and started him. And and now the teams are stopping throwing his way. You know, Jacobs is going to get get the lion's share, no pun intended, of targets. So, round it off. Let's talk defensive linemen. What are we doing here? First one is a guy that uh, Brad knows a lot about and really likes, and I do too, but he just can't stay healthy. So uh, I believe it's five games this year that uh, Quiddy Pay of the Colts has started and finished. So in those games, he got about a 72% snap share with 28 solos, eight assists, seven tackles for a loss, and five snacks, snacks, sacks, five uh, sacks. But no, no, again, no, no, the no, problem no, no. is that uh, that's five games. There's two other that he's played in and not finished. Um, so if he's playing a full game, he's probably getting you really nice stats. So we're going to see what happens this week. They're playing the Vikings. Vikings give up the fifth most points to defensive ends. So it's a great position for him. Again, if he's going to be healthy and out there, he is widely available. It's like 4% on Yahoo. He's a great guy to add. Next two guys are just more matchup type of plays for deeper leagues. Again, Morgan Fox of the Chargers. So over the past... Um, do, 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 I think it's from like week eight on here. He's got a 66.8% snap share. Um, sorry, over the past five weeks, that wouldn't be week eight. My math is off, but he's got 16 combined, two tackles for a loss and a sack. Had some nice games in there, but the Titans are second in points allowed to opposing defensive end. So he's going to get you a couple of tackles in there. He's got a chance for a tackle for a loss or a sack. Same thing on the other side of the ball to Marcus Walker. Is another deep play, but the Chargers are third in points allowed to opposing defensive end. So there's going to be a lot of points available for some of these deeper waiver type guys. If you need a, someone just to fill in there because of injuries, and we see that every week, it's been crazy, or you just somehow made it in there and didn't have a whole lot of depth. Um, two guys that pretty much available all over the place that you can go get. And last guy, defensive tackle plays a name that you've been playing IDP for a while that you know from his time with the commanders, Matt Ioannidis. So, he uh, returned in week 14 as far as sort of full-time playing. He had missed a couple of weeks in there. The Panthers play the Steelers, who give up the fourth most points to opposing defensive ends. He's got four or more combined tackles in half his games this year, and pretty much all of those have been, been plus matchups. So, you know, playing next to Derek Brown, if he's going to be out there again. That Panthers have had a really nice defense come together here, and their team as oh, a whole yeah. sort of since Matt Rule went out. Um, and guys like this – and normally you wouldn't think about playing in the right matchup with the players around them. They're able to be productive and, uh, again, just sort of a spot play like we do with their defensive tackles each week. But I think he's got a chance to get you some nice points for free. Yeah, especially if Pickett is out. I know he's – I believe he's still in the concussion protocol last I checked. So who knows what to, what to make of that Pittsburgh quarterback situation. So Ioannidis could be a really fun matchup play for sure. All right, thank you guys as always. If you have questions, drop them below. Like the video, send it out to all your friends, and we'll see you next time.